Poverty in Nigeria had become a source of concern. There was need for urgent attention to tackle this disturbing phenomenon. A new vision and concept was needed to overcome this challenge. There is another concept we were exploring in the city consultation. That's the role of what we call social capital, you know, it's not a capital that uh, is monetized in the sense, but it's the capital you prepared of your time, even of your money, to give to your community. Okay, if you now go back in our history, there's been a lot of people who provided social capital to the communities. Most of the people who provided money for building churches, eh? for building schools, for building things in their communities, they were not asking something in, return. So, something in return. They were just trying to improve their community. All we've done is to say most of those things tend to be infrastructure. Let's do something in the productive activity area. And that's why poverty became the real challenge we were facing. That was why we had a big meeting of all our people to make, see the money for this project. This was the beginning of it. All the money we contributed that does not belong to anybody, it belongs to the community. Yet, this concept did not stop the people of Ijebu from celebrating Oju Deoba an annual fiesta which takes place on the third day after Ileya festival, during which the Jebus pay homage to the Awugale of Jebuland. While a sizable number of the community is celebrating this annual fiesta, the larger majority have to contend with the issues of living above poverty line. Now the important thing about uh, Oba Daytono was that I had to convince him that, and the biggest challenge, the biggest uh, enemy was poverty. And that we were trying to test out a set of ideas about how to deal with poverty. You know, there was increase in the rate of employment in the country. And progressively, this has been the case all the years. We have a number of boys, girls all around, able-bodied, who are not really engaged. In response to this challenge in 1998, a program designed to reduce poverty in Ijebu land was proposed by the Development Policy Center, DPC Ibadan, under the leadership of Professor Akin Mabogunje. The Department of Urban Management and Environment of the Development Policy Center, DPC, headed by late Professor Sylvester Abumere and Dr. Luwemimo Oluwa Shola, under the supervision of Professor Akima Bogunje, coordinated the Jebu Ode City Consultation, which led to the emergence of the Jebu Ode Development Initiative on Poverty Reduction. It involved mobilizing the entire community to be involved in this program aimed at reducing the level of poverty in Jebu Ode. After we've done most of the mini consultation, the issue was to now hold the real city consultation. Between 22nd and 24th March 1999, a citywide consultation on poverty reduction 
was held with the royal cooperation and support of the Awujale, His Imperial Majesty Obasikiru Adetono. It was sponsored by the Development Policy Center and the Professor Adebayo Adiriji-led African Center for Development and Strategic Studies, ACDES, Ijebode. It involved contribution from various stakeholders in Ijebode, such as the then military administrator of Ogun State, Navy Captain Kayode Olofimoyi, the state and local government, market men and women, community leaders and youths, virtually every sector of the community participated in the consultation process. When this program was initiated in 1998, it brought together various stakeholders in the community, such as market men and women and artisans. At that time, we were 25 in all. The broad-based consultation gave birth to the inauguration of the Board of Ijebu Development Initiative on Poverty Reduction on 29th July 1999 by the Grand Patron of the Initiative, His Imperial Majesty Oba Sikiru Adetono. It was the beginning of a new century, the 21st century, a century full of hope and expectations. One year after the inauguration of the Board of Directors of the Jebu Development Initiative on Poverty Reduction, IDIPR, the action plan of the Poverty Reduction Program was launched at the Awujales Palace. I am indeed extremely happy to welcome all of you to this palace today for the launch of the action plan of the Jebu Development Board on Poverty Reduction. It is now my pleasure when I say to launch this book now, the plan, the red book, our Bible and the Quran, to the eternal glory of our Lord, with the sum of one million. The stage was now set for the takeoff of the poverty reduction program. To facilitate the work of the IDIPR, Awujale Sekiru Adetono donated a block of offices to the initiative which is used for the administration of the IDIPR. In order to ensure the success of its vision, the IDIPR based the implementation of its program on a quadruple of actions. First is the acquisition of knowledge through training workshops. It's therefore mandatory for any person that will be beneficiary of any IDIPR program to participate in training workshops before embarking on any program. We have core skills, which we call our core business. Um, we are into training people into microcredit and into farming in all its ramifications. The average Nigerian does not have access to loans and financial support from conventional commercial banks. And to overcome this challenge, the IDIPR organized participants in its programs into cooperative societies. This time-tested traditional group method of mobilization ensured that members of the cooperative societies not only have access to micro-loan facilities, but have recorded 99.8% in loan repayments. The concept of a farm village has given a new meaning to one of the most innovative planks of IDIPR quadruple. The 156 hectares of farmland at Eriwe, acquired from the Ogun State Government, has attracted visitors from top government agencies and officials. The Eriwe farm is an integrated farm settlement with concrete fish tanks, earthen fish ponds, a smoking clean, a modern feed mill, a health clinic, and other numerous facilities. Chinasa Asonye is an award-winning fish farmer at the Eriwe Fish Farm. I'm an accountant, and um, I was working before I went into fish farming. I got into an association called our association, not here in Ijebu, then from that, that's, all, that's in Lagos State, 
So from that association, we now went for a training in Ibadan. That was when I got to meet the Ijebu people. Then the Ijebu people came and gave the analysis of how they do their fish. Then from there, I got interested and I came to Ijebu to ask them what is happening. And I met Mr. Odion, that was a farm manager, and he now told me that these are the things I'm supposed to do. And since 2009, I've been in Ijebu. Perhaps one of the most important planks of the quadruple of action of the initiative is the appreciation of the fact that the poverty alleviation program must be well developed and sustained. The youths form the largest age group in the unemployment bracket of the poverty alleviation program, hence the need to have a youth development program that is sustainable for generations to come. We organize career talk for secondary school students. We do this once in a year. Another important intervention of the initiative is a medical and health program. After all, it's only a healthy person that can fight poverty. It's therefore instructive that the IDIPR has committed a lot of resources to its medical and health program. One of the strategies was to ensure that the people are in good health. Uh, you need energy and good health to make money. So if there is poverty, and one of the causes of poverty is uh, ill health. So we realize that we cannot really be talking about uh, poverty eradication without really putting health components in place. In pursuance of its health agenda, the initiative has established health clinics in various institutions, such as Ansarudin Secondary School, Ota Street, Christ Church Secondary School, Sabo, and others. When we started, we realized that uh, we, a lot of uh, ill health starts from the children. They are disadvantaged, the parents are too busy trying to make hands meet for these children. And uh, we intervened by setting up school health clinics in the areas where our beneficiaries attend to attend the uh, schools and uh, we partner with the schools, we build health, school health clinic, we partner with the local government to provide services, we provide drugs and the turnout and the effects of these services have been tremendous. To complement the effort of the medical and health committee, the family of Professor O.K. Alausa renovated the lining in ward building at the State Hospital in Jabode at a cost of one million 500,000 Naira. Beyond physical structures, Professor Lausa, a professor of community medicine and chairman of the board of directors of the IDIPR, plans to leave behind a legacy of community health insurance by keying into the state government Araya program. The second one that I hope to do as a medical person is to, is to really get the farmers into, they are already in cooperative groups, but to get them into what we call community insurance scheme, so that they can, they can look after, we, we, you know, there will be facilities for them to look after their health. And then by doing that, they will also join what we call the Araya program of uh, Ogun State Government. Uh, because they are in a group, it will be easy for them to contribute towards this. And by doing that, we've already started establishing what we call the school health program. In all the areas we go, we have established school health program. Right now, we have established five school health program. This will enable people of Ijebu land have access to affordable health care delivery service. The traditional institution inspired by the leadership of Awujale Sikiru Adetono have also identified with the program. The Council of Otumbas of Ijebu Land have donated a multi-millionaire modern comfort station at Eriwe Farm Village for the initiative, while the Council of Ijebu Chiefs have also donated a farm hall to the initiative. The initiative has continued to expand in size and scope. New farm villages have been established in other parts of Ijebu Land. The initiative now has 100 hectares of farmland in Imodi, Ijasi, 
50 hectares of farmland in Odojobure and 131 hectares of farmland in Ijesha Ijebu farm village. The initiative now has rubber plantations on its farm villages in Imodi Ijasi, Odojobure and Ijesha Ijebu. We also are a ready market for the product. Once the product is ready, we will buy. Other enterprises of the initiative include all-season vegetable production, plantain production, pineapple production, poultry, pilgrim, fish processing, transportation, and other ventures. This unique initiative has continued to generate interest in different categories of interest groups, individuals, and stakeholders. It has also attracted the attention of Honorable Adewale Ojuri, representing Odogolu constituency at the Ogun State House of Assembly. So there's no, there's no way that those units will not have to come to IDIPR and, and, and intend so that they can learn how we can move things forward. Because IDIPR itself has grown to a force that must be reckoned with, uh, not just financially, but because it has, it has done projects that have been successful and have only been successful with IDIPR. Similar people have taken on those projects and they haven't worked. When the founding fathers embarked on this initiative, one of the coordinating guiding principles was that to drive this program, the leadership must render selfless service. Things that the initiative decided from the word go was that it will be transparent and accountable. Each year, there is an annual general meeting, AGM, during which the directors render stewardship. The financial report of the IDIPR for each year is presented by external auditors during the AGM. We have audited the financial statement of the Jebu Development Initiative on Poverty Reduction for the year ended 31st December 2015. Every member of the board is not paid a kobo. So I felt that this was a service of which I can give back to my community, Jebudi. Then it was Jebudi initially for what God had done to me in my career and my life. So when the decision was taken that there would be no pay, no salary, no money, no support, I said, well, as a matter of fact, when we meet, we, ha we always have long meeting. And Papa Degu, of blessed memory, you know, we used to call him Boli and Epa. <laughs> That is what Baba will serve, will bring on, and that's what we will take. I mean, that's leader. When Baba is taking that, and we, we all, have no we have no choice. <laughs> and we were all very glad in serving, you know, uh, the community. In the Yabu day, KBC will not, will not, in fact, uh, allow anybody to come into a program that is interested in that you will be paid any allowance. Because there are so many Jebu uh, citizens, youth that are really empowered, that want to do community service for Jebu Day. And it's an opportunity for me actually to be called upon by KBC. You know, initially as a director of the initiative and eventually as the chairman. So it's a pleasure. If, I, if there is anything, I've spent part of my income to service the, uh, the program of the initiative. Members of the board of trustees and uh, directors not only sacrifice their time and resources for the progress of the initiative, but continually fashion out strategies for making the poverty reduction program successful. While the trustees and directors formulate and give policy directions, Mr. Marcos Adeniyi, who was deployed by DPC at the inception of the initiative, is saddled with the management of the affairs of the Poverty Reduction Program. 
in appreciation of his dedication to the service of the initiative, KBAC Awujale Sekiro Aditono presented Mr. Marcos Adeniyi with the gift of a car. The future of IDIPR is bright. The story of Saka Abdulatif Yunis Ishmael and Rofiat Abubakar, all senior secondary school students at Adiola Udutola College, is an eloquent testimony to the success of the IDIPR. The trio are indigent students who are beneficiaries of scholarship awards from an anonymous successful fish farmer of the initiative who, in appreciation of the turnaround in his business since he became an IDIPR fish farmer, decided to offer these three youngsters hope for a better future. Similarly, a stakeholder donated a computerized system to monitor operations of the feed mill. To get this far, the Jebu Initiative has had to contend with numerous challenges, especially in the area of sustaining the program financially. Try not to give money as much as possible. We give you the working instruments, things like that, the old cheek, uh, okay, we, okay. We get the welders to make cages and so on. We give you just working capital to buy feeds and so on. Now there was a woman whom we did all this to. And she did exactly what you said. Sold everything <laughs> and wasn't going to repay. So we told Kabyeshi. Kabyeshi got the number. The husband has a telephone. So KBS phoned the husband and said, well, when can we come and visit you and your wife? And he says, KBS, why would you visit me? He said, your wife took the money of Omalare <laughs> and has refused to pay back. So I'm the debt collector. I have to come. And they say, KBS, you can't come. <laughs> you, you can't come. OK. Which would have cost them a lot more. They paid back. OK. And since then, what we learned from that is to change our strategy. As for the grand patron of the initiative, Awujale Sikiru Adetono, he had made up his mind a long time ago that Ijebu land will rise above poverty. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
הזאת.